that uh, it's only by the Holy Spirit that we can interpret the scriptures. And you claiming you've got the spirit in you. I said, let the spirit speak now. Decepticons mobilize. It is time. Somebody might ask, though, you know, but, you know, the Quran came, though. They don't need the Torah and the gospel, right? They don't, they don't need the Torah and the gospel. It's irrelevant now. That was for the past. It's been lost. It's been changed. They don't have it anymore. Well, the Quran has already told us that it's with them, that it's in their possession. Uh, not only that, but watch what the Quran says here in chapter 5, verse 43. It says, um, it says, why do they come to you, Muhammad? Why are they coming to you when they have the Torah in which Allah's judgments are in? So the Quran has a conversation happening between Allah and Muhammad where the Jews come to Muhammad for judgment. And it literally says that they have the Torah in which Allah's judgments are already in. They don't need to go to the Quran. In the seventh century, in Muhammad's time, the Torah was still valid for judgment, <clears throat> valid for use for the Jews. Then we keep reading, verse 47, right? After, you know, it explains in 46 that it revealed the gospel to Jesus, right? And then it says in verse 47, it says, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. And whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed in it, they are of the rebellious. They are of the wrongdoers. So this is what we have here. We have the Quran holding Jews and Christians accountable. They are held accountable for judging according to the scriptures they have. And the reason why they're held accountable is because these are supposed to be revelations from Allah with his judgments, with his decisions. And to stray away from them, to stray away from their scriptures, shows that you're rebelling against Allah, you're rebelling against God, you're rebelling against his commands. I don't want to be defiantly disobedient. So specifically here, we might hear, well, you know, uh, you know, it says, let the people of the gospel judge, but judge by what? It literally tells you in the phrase, let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed in it. It's talking about the gospel. So the gospel is used for judgment. It's good for reproach. How do we know this? Let's continue to see what the Quran says. Same chapter, chapter 5, verse 68. Oh. Chapter 5, verse 68, verse 68, verse 68. But he was reading chapter 5, verse 47. What about verse 48? Did the indwelling Holy Spirit of a truthful God tell him to skip it for a reason? And this is not new. In another debate, Dr. James White, one of the more prominent Christian debaters in the last decade conveniently ignored verse 48 as well. Full video of that is also linked in the description below. And if you can show me something in the context that changes this, please do. I wasn't shown anything that changes this. All I was just thrown out there, you're reading it a-contextually. A he was shown verse 48. To thee, Muhammad, we reveal scripture confirming what came before it, meaning confirming that and acting as a quality control, a muhaminan, a muhaminan alayhi, muhaminan alayhi, a quality control, a guardian, a chick. I am one of the people of the gospel. This is addressed to me. What am I supposed to do with it? Who am I supposed to judge? What am I supposed to judge? How am I supposed to judge by if I no longer have the gospel? If, it, if the gospel is a book given to Jesus that had disappeared by the days of Muhammad, how could anyone to whom this was addressed and anyone down through the centuries thereafter obey this text? How am I supposed to obey the Quran in light of your beliefs? I don't want to be defiantly disobedient. Dear sincere and honest Christians, unlike these two debaters, you obey these texts by firstly, reading verse 48 and secondly, getting the interpretation of these verses from Islamic scholars. It is really that simple. The reason behind them trying to hide Surah 548 is because it tells them to obey the Quran and judge by the Quran. It clearly reads, We have revealed to you, O Prophet, this book with the truth, as a confirmation of previous scriptures and a supreme authority on them. So, judge between them by what God has revealed, and do not follow their desires over the truth that has come to you. I don't want to be defiantly disobedient. Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. The ordinary people, poor people, they don't know what's going on. What game is being played? Who knows? You may lose your faith in us, but never in yourselves. 
From here, the fight will be your own. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا أُولَئِكَ يُعْرَضُونَ عَلَى رَبِّهِمْ وَيَقُولُ الْأَشْهَادُ هَؤُلَاءِ الَّذِينَ كَذَبُوا عَلَى رَبِّهِمْ أَلَا لَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ 